About six years ago when the world was crazy but not completely lost its way like it is now, Jacob Collier, who was called the Mozart of this time, was interviewed by music theorist and worldwide recognized transcriber Jun Lee, who worked with Steve Vai and Chick Corea, for instance. Now, in this interview, Collier spoke about negative harmony, which he studied in the book A Theory of Harmony, written by Swiss theorist, conductor and musician Ernst Levy. Now, Collier is conveying this theory since 2017. And according to Collier, negative harmony is another way, a darker way, a moodier way to get to the tonic, to get to home. Now, it is a polar opposite and reflection of the harmony that we would normally use, like a 2-5-1, for instance. Now, since that interview, this controversial subject is all over YouTube. Uh, you get people that embrace it, people that think it's nonsense, and people that yawn a lot. Now, for the last group, we invented the Macarena. Anyways, the conclusion is that mathematics and beautiful music go hand in hand. So, pull your calculator out of the mod balls and let's calculate some music. So, why bother with negative harmony in the first place? Well, Negative harmony can help you to write very interesting variations of your own musical ideas that generates a, mu mu a, bl bl a f that generates a moody, darker and absolutely different yet cohesive counterpart of your existing musical ideas. Now, maybe negative harmony is much more a transformative technique than a creative technique. I mean, you must be able to write decent music in the first place to be able to transform it using negative harmony. Now the result can be amazing and it can be the trick that you've always been looking for. And besides that, it is a great way to get inspired by an existing melody uh, and make your own negative version of it and become a hero after all, through the back door. Now many refer to the book A Theory of Harmony published in the 80s, written by Ernst Levy, as the book where negative harmony began. In this complex book, Levy states that all chords uh, have opposites in emotion and harmony. Uh, he uses the analogy of a tree where a part lives above the ground and the unknown part lives under the ground. Now Levy describes the undertone series, which is an extreme symmetrical mirror image of the overtone series, according to Levy. Now overtones or partials are tones or better frequencies that sound along with any single note, the fundamental, that we are playing on an instrument. as you can see in this figure. Now, these are tones that already exist in nature, but undertones are the mirror image or reflection of the overtones and do not exist in nature. So that's extraordinary. It's another harmonic world, but connected to the upper world. So Levy's conclusion was that every positive in music has its negative counterpart, like precedence. And this we can use mainly in harmony but also in melody, creating a new, darker, parallel, harmonic world. Now, negative counterparts are something that we see in nature and life all the time. There's bright versus dark, clear versus muddy, sad versus happy, good versus bad, perfect versus unperfect, positive versus negative, clean versus messy, and messy versus Ronaldo. Now, in music, the positive harmony would be a major chord, and a negative harmony would be a minor chord, happy versus sad. Now, making a mirror image of a melody already existed in the form of an inversion of melody. Many composers throughout history used mirroring melodies around an axis far before negative harmony was even a concept. It is just that mirroring chords in the extreme way Levy did was a rather new idea. Although it must be said that there are traces of negative harmony that can be found in compositions by composers as old as Johann Sebastian Bach, and also Rachmaninoff used this technique when he wrote a variation on a theme by Paganini. Now for that, watch the tutorial of my colleague, YouTube teacher Tommaso Zilio from Music Theory for Guitar. I will link it in the description. Anyway, to learn all of this in the right order, you have to begin with understanding how to make an inversion of a melody. So let's learn that right now. Now, an inversion of a melody is when you mirror a melody around an axis, for instance, the tonic A in the key of A minor. Now, just look at this piano roll uh, from my DAW where I entered this melody. Now, where the melody goes up in pitch, the inversion goes down in pitch with the same interval. The inversion could produce notes outside the key, but they can be adapted to fit the active key. And we call this a diatonic inversion an inversion of the melody that stays within the original key. For instance, 
When we take a C major scale that looks like this, we can invert the scale around the axis that is represented by the tonic. Now every time we go up a note, then we do the same thing in the opposite direction in the inversion. So C stays C because this is the axis, D becomes B, E becomes A, F becomes G, G becomes F, and A becomes E, and B becomes D. Now, we could even make a conversion table to quickly determine the conversion of the notes. Now let's do this for a super simple melody like Twinkle Little Star, or Altijd is Kort Jakje Ziek, as we call it in the Netherlands, which means Short Jacket is always ill. But yeah, we all know what is wrong with Short Jacket, right? Anyways, it sounds like this. Now from the tonic C we go up a fifth to G and in the inversion down a fifth to F. Then up a second to A and in the inversion down a second to E. Then down a second to G is up a second to F. Then down a second to F is up a second to G. Down a second to E is up a second to A and down a second to D is up a second to B. And down a second to C is up a second to C. And there we are, we have created an inversion of Twinkle Little Star. Now how cool is that? A true milestone. <laughs> Harmony must be adapted too, to let the inversion sound logical. Now let's play both original melody and the diatonic inverted melody after each other. Now we could also do this in the A minor key with the famous melody Still Cut the Blues by Gary Moore. Now the A minor scale and its diatonic inversion looks like this. A stays A because this is the axis of the inversion. B becomes G, C becomes F, D becomes E, E becomes D, F becomes C, and G becomes B. So the inversion table looks like this. Now to make a diatonic inversion of the theme of this song, we just have to follow the conversion table. For the sake of clarity, I transposed the melody down an octave. Now the mirror axis is a tonic A. Now when the melody goes up, the inversion goes down by the same interval, but within the key. And we'll keep doing this until we end up with a sensible inversion. Everybody knows this song that originates from the 80s where the boys in the band spend more time on makeup and hairspray than their girlfriends did. My god, I wish I grew up in the 80s. Oh yeah, I did. Both melodies now have different accompanying chords to make it sound right. In fact, I inverted the chords with the same conversion table as I did with the melody. For instance, that first chord, D minor, becomes A minor, A, C, E, in the inversion. And G major with the notes G, B, D becomes E minor with the notes E, G, B. Now, and this brings us closer to the principle of negative harmony, but we're still not there. Now, let's bring the theme of Still Got the Blues back to the original pitch and listen to the melody and its inversion. Now as you can hear, the inversion is almost another world, but it still feels connected to the original by the structure and rhythm. Now look at the diatonic inversion of the C major scale again. Now when we name the intervals between each note, we'll see that the intervals in the inversion are not corresponding with the intervals in the original melody. Now from C to D in the scale is a whole step, while in the inversion the interval between the tonic 
and the second note B is a half step. Now we had a reason for this, because we didn't want notes uh, that were outside the key of C major. We were aiming at a diatonic inversion. But now we are going to make the inversion literal and consistent. And this means that every interval will be exactly the same in the original and inversion. Now from the tonic we go up a whole step to D, and in the inversion we go down a whole step to B flat. Then up a whole step to E, and in the inversion down a whole step to A flat. Up a half step to F means down a half step to G. Up a whole step to G means down a whole step to F. And up a whole step to A means down a whole step to E flat. Up a whole step to B means down a whole step to D flat. And up a half step to C means down a half step to C. So this is the conversion table. Now the resulting scale can be seen as a C Phrygian scale. The C Phrygian scale has four flats and a minor second degree. It is a dark minor scale. Now such a literal inversion we call a strict inversion or chromatic inversion. So the melody becomes a lot darker with four flattened notes. More flats means darker and more sharps means brighter. Just like in the circle of fifths where one side is bright and the other side is uh, darker. And if you want to know more about this subject, uh, then you could watch my tutorial about brightness in the skills, uh, chords and modes. Now here you see Twinkle Little Star uh, with its chromatic inversion according to the conversion table we have made in the previous chapter. It becomes a whole different inversion than the diatonic version we saw earlier. It is now a melody with three flats and sounds much darker. And here are the original and the inversion played in a row. Now, our example, Still Got the Blues in A minor, can also be inverted to a chromatic or strict version. Now, for this, we have to chromatically invert the A minor scale. And we'll just follow the intervals and we'll be all right. A whole step up is a whole step down. A half step up is a half step down. A whole step up is a whole step down. A whole step up is a whole step down. A half step up is a half step down. A whole step up is a whole step down. And a whole step up is a whole step down. Now, the scale becomes an A mixolydian scale, which is a major scale with a flattened seventh degree. So this will sound quite different from the original, which was in the key of A minor or a Aeolian or natural minor. Now the structure and the rhythm, however, stays the same, and this makes that it stays connected to the original. Now harmonized with the right chords, we'll get this result. Now let's play both original and chromatic inversion after each other. Now, now you understand what inversions of melody are and we touch the inversion of chords through a conversion table of notes. So mirroring melody and chords around an axis. And this is what we see in the next part when we're going to look at the real negative harmony. The things that you have learned in this lesson are needed to uh, grasp the essence of negative harmony. So I'll see you soon on, on the, the other, other side. side. Ooh, that was creepy.